it's fitting that yesterday, and to start today, Mike, we were talking about uh, circumcised and uncircumcised penises because this animal that Ron McGill created that was now now stuffed and sitting in a place that the cameras can't see it at the moment, but it looks like a botched, circumcised wiener with hands is what it looks like to me. And we're <laughs> and back. So, <laughs> what kind of wieners are you doing? Uh, I'm trying and to, we're back. I would like to go ahead and get a, an, ex- an explanation from Ron because I was not here when this animal was built. Oh, yeah. Well, that's not what it looks like to me. Uh, you're, uh, you're coming from a, from a sad place there, brother. Are you talking about the uh, penis or the animal? Uh, <laughs> the animal. The animal doesn't look uh, like okay. a butt circumcised. It looks like a sh- great white shark head mm-hmm. with harpy eagle talons, mm-hmm. uh, a massive tail. No, that's exactly what it looked. That's 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 the that's the killer beast, man. Okay. I mean, beautiful. I- I would call it a killer beast really? as well. You're, you're, well what about it, now? It, it, your penis looks like the head of a great white shark? That's pretty incredible. If they botched the surgery, then yes, it would have looked like that, yes. <laughs> Ron, I was reading about a wallaby that was found in Coney Island, and they created a little uh, sort of uh, place for him to live because they were expecting more. Uh, I, I'm curious as to why you would think they're expecting more, and I'm guessing this is just part of like you know people wanting to buy these exotic animals because I don't know who these folks are. Like if I ever walked into somebody's house and they had a, like a pet kangaroo, I would freak out. Yeah, wall- wallabies are not a terribly uncommon pet, unfortunately. Really? Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, I remember our, our Gloria Stefan had some hmm. down here for a while um, that she she loved and she took very good care of. But generally speaking, they are not an animal that I would ever recommend as a pet. But again, you know, people look at kangaroos and wallabies, which are just kind of a smaller form of a kangaroo, and they have them. Just because they found one doesn't mean they should expect more. Now, normally in the wild, they are found in groups called mobs. But uh, in Coney Island, I don't expect that there are mobs that exist. That was probably an individual's pet that escaped, and that's where they got it. Gotcha. How often are you fooled by the Internet, Ron? You know, in the beginning, I think, you know, a couple of years ago, I was fooled a lot. Yeah. And then when some of the more ridiculous stuff came out and I saw some of this AI stuff and I saw some of the stuff that they're able to create, you know, with computer generated images, I'm not fooled anymore. I, I really I, I look at it and say, well, that's really good work. But, you know, when I see a, uh, you know, woolly mammoth walking in Manhattan, I don't believe that really exists. So Ted Cruz got fooled by a viral photo that fools people often. And by the way, I think that it's become a Mandela effect that Dan was ever fooled by this. I truly don't think Dan was ever fooled by the shark on the highway, but Ron, (laughs) were you ever fooled by the shark on the highway or the shark in in the mall or the great white shark eating the the dude diving from from a helicopter? Has the internet ever gotten you the way that it got Ted Cruz? Not like that. No, those those shark images are the ones that I tend to, you know, see through right away because they're very easy to Photoshop and to duplicate and to create these false images. So anytime you see fish in water and stuff like that, those are very easy to, you know, manipulate in the way you want to uh, to fit your narrative. But hypothetically speaking, if Los Angeles did become flooded next to the Pacific Ocean and the water was that high, would a great white shark take a dalliance into downtown Los Angeles? You know, I am not going to say that's impossible, Mike, but keep in mind that great white sharks uh, tend to stay in pretty deep water. They will occasionally come up to the shoreline, of course, when we have these surfer encounters that we've heard about. But, uh, you know, I would say maybe a smaller shark, uh, but not something like a great white shark. Run. Let's go ahead, Greg. Yeah, you're confusing, you're confusing. You're confusing. You're confusing. Yeah, yeah, you're confusing Greg Cody. He's almost 69. He's easily confused. In your office. Go so ahead, Greg. To pipe down. Okay. <laughs> Ron, sad, <laughs> sad news down here with Lolita, the killer whale, dying yeah. just days before being released from Miami Aquarium into the wild. At at her age, how would she have fared in the wild? I want to be honest with you, we've discussed this on the show before. Uh, The analogy I use is this. This is an animal that for the overwhelming majority of her life, over five decades, has been kept in a horrific tank uh, under terrible conditions. No question about that. But to think that you can just take her and bring her to the wild, even to a sea pen, what they were talking about, uh, would have been so psychologically traumatic traumatic for that animal, not to mention the physical challenges. You know, the ocean has a bunch of pathogens that uh, she has not been exposed to growing up in that 
pretty much sterile tank. Um, we as kids, you know, we're exposed to things as kids and, and we grow up and we build up these antibodies, these immunities to those things as we're exposed to them. Uh, you know, I, I've used this analogy before. I go to Africa. If I drink the water in Africa, I will be pooping through a needle for three weeks. If these kids drink the water who live there, have raised there, they can drink the water and they seem to be okay because they built up a resistance. So the psychological trauma of moving her, removing her from this place, it's like if you take a kid that's been illegally or horribly wrongly taken away from his family and put into a padded room, as cruel and horrible as that is, and raised in a padded room all of his or her life, right? And then all of a sudden they say, this was wrong. We couldn't do this. Let's take this kid and let's put him out into civilization now. Think about the mental trauma that's going to happen to this kid. And I know there are people who have said, oh, listen, oh, but her family is going to recognize her right away and they're going to take her in. She's going to know the language. Again, folks, human beings are pretty, pretty smart, pretty smart animals, so to speak. At least most eh. of them. Mm. If you take if you take a child, right, let's take you take a child out of that out from their family, let's say in Cambodia, bring them to the United States when they're two years old. And you raised them with a family in the United States, two years old, for 50 years. At 52, you're going to send them back to Cambodia. Let me ask you something. Do you think the mother of that person is going to recognize that person? That's my child. That's my child. Do you think that child who has only spoken English all of his or her life going back to Cambodia is going to say, oh, my language, I recognize it. What do I do? Start speaking the language? Right no. Let's use some common sense here. I am not negating the fact that what was done to that killer whale was horrific. It was horrific. It should never, ever happen again. But two wrongs don't make a right. And uh, I think it would have been horrifically traumatic for that animal to be moved out there with all the good intentions. People with their hearts are thinking, um, I understand that and I support that, that good intention. But the reality is it would have been catastrophic, in my opinion. Let's just clarify something for the record. Mm. If humans are kidnapped and sequestered, <laughs> they should be reunited with their families <laughs> after, correct? Like, you don't think that they should this stay is captive Very because important. it'd be hard for them to be reacclimated into society. Absolutely. Okay, good. Absolutely. Okay. Now you can go, Greg. I had you a follow-up follow question because you're obviously very passionate about what happened to Lolita. What should be the repercussion of this? Should there literally be a law against the life she was made to live? I believe so. Yeah, I do believe so. Uh, that that is horrific to me. It was, you know, really, it, it was it was it was just animal cruelty to me. Uh, you know, you can't have such a large, intelligent uh, being uh, sequestered in such a small pen for her entire life, doing doing what she did. Uh, again, now I think you know when the people did that long ago, they didn't know better, and I think the people who cared for her were trying to do the best they could to care for her. But at the end of the day, it was the wrong thing. So we can never let that happen again. Ron, I'm um, looking at a photo here, and we have some, if you could put it up, of a two-headed snake. It was in, it's in the uh, Waco, Texas, the Cameron Park Zoo. Uh, supposedly also has two brains. Um, yeah. Tell me more about this snake, and are there any more two-headed animals just kind of hanging around zoos? Yeah, you know, two-headed reptiles are more common than what you would see in, like, say, two-headed uh, mammals. Uh, and I don't think I've ever seen a two-headed bird. But uh, I have seen some two-headed mammals. They live, generally speaking, much shortened lives. But two-headed reptiles can live quite a, quite a long life. I've seen that in turtles and snakes very commonly. Um, and they have independent minds. They share a lot of the internal organs. But they seem to deal pretty well. Um, I remember raising a two-headed ball python for, for years that survived pretty well. Um, in the wild, sometimes it's more of a challenge. But under human care, you know, the the person caring for the snake can make sure that it's getting fed. And since it usually shares the stomach, it doesn't matter which head eats. Sometimes one is more dominant than the other. But uh, it does occur. It's just basically a, a Siamese twin in an animal. Uh, it's it like is. a Matt Damon, Greg Kinnear situation. Oh, yes. wow. <laughs> hey, uh, we'll go one. With Roy over there. With Ron, the okay. Let's Let's Ron there used to be a show called Cat Dog. Is that possible? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, let me explain to you further how the show <laughs> worked. It was one animal, One on one side was the head of a dog, mm. and on the other side was the head of a cat. Mm. Now you get it? Is that possible? And they shared the same body, maybe same stomach. A lot of the things you just okay. mentioned. Yeah, exactly. Now that would be an absolute negative there, Billy. Sorry about that. That's oh. after a very good night of drinking and what other hallucinogenics. Have you tried it, though, Ron? Are we sure? Positive. Okay. 
Uh, Ron, the biggest Burmese python in the world uh, was recently captured, clocked in at 19 feet, and it was caught last month by hunters Monster. In, big, in Big Cypress Reserve uh, down here in South Florida. Uh, is this the proper way, and we're going to show the video here in a second, to trap a python? Yeah, I can't see. Oh, there it is. Well, that's not the way you would trap a 19-foot python. I've that one there is probably about 9, 10 feet max. But uh, no, you would not do that like that. No. Is he trying to uh, choke him there? Is that what he's doing? No, he's just trying to keep him from biting him. But, uh, uh, you know, at least he's not doing it alone. You would never go after a snake that large by yourself because the snake's going to wrap around. Now, granted, these guys are doing something here for a little dramatic uh, enhancement. You know, it, it was not as as dramatic as they made it look there. But uh, the bottom line is, um, yeah, you want to, of course, grab the head right behind the neck, but a snake the size that you're describing would immediately wrap around you and pretty much incapacitate your arms and slowly but surely suffocate you to death and you would probably die. So you would never want to do anything like that with a snake alone. I should you probably know this, but what is the end game for these guys in particular? They just seem to be wrapping up the mouth and what are they doing? They're not keeping the well, I python. Think, I think oh, they get rewards. They're all, generally speaking, all those snakes get euthanized. Hmm. They sell the skins um, and, and all those snakes get euthanized. Don't, uh, don't, doesn't South Florida also have an open hunting season on these invasive animals in which they can actually cash rewards? Yes, they have the python hunt, the annual python hunt, uh, where, you know, the, the winners get footballs made out of python skins and things like that, all kinds of trophies. And there's cash rewards, too. So there's a lot of incentive. The only problem I have with that is sometimes you get people, you know, coming down from like the Carolinas and Tennessee and Michigan to come hunt pythons, and they're not familiar with the Everglades and the kind of habitat that these animals are found in, and then you get people get hurt, get stranded, and have to be rescued. So there's a lot of danger to that. It's not just like a big rodeo like people think. I feel like this is where we tell people to donate to Ron's substantive endowment, which I believe <laughs> uh, Mike is holding up at the moment. No? Yeah. No. Is your endowment circumcised? <laughs> Was? <laughs> no, we like to keep everything in the endowment whole. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, I'm wow. reading okay. into that answer. Wow. I'm going to mark you down as a no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How'd the surgery go? Ron, oh, wait, see no, cat dog? No. Look, see that? You oh, tell me that's not possible. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, now I got it. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, I'm all for that. I knew it. It's Christmas. <laughs> We not only have Greg Cody here, who doesn't like the idea that he's turning 69 because there's going to be an entire year of jokes, so we won't get to that point yet, but I love the contrast of Greg Cody and Lucy Rodine. Who Lucy is, uh, did you just turn 25 or about to turn 25, or am I not just allowed to ask that question? Just turned 25. All right. Wow. When was your birthday? July. You weren't here. Happy birthday. Oh, happy it's birthday. Okay. Do you share a birthday with uh, Billy's new daughter? When's your daughter's birthday? July 6th. Oh, I'm the 12th. Mm, no. Close. Um, at age 25, there are things that you haven't really done that most of us, well, most of me in my 40s, uh, have done my whole life. And you're having trouble with what these days? Now, I don't normally feel that young. Mm -hmm. I, I feel, people tell me I'm an old soul, mm. which is very nice. And it makes me feel special. I think it's the glasses. It's Thank I think you. <laughs> it, it's Those the, are new, by the way. Ooh. It's the thrifting and antiquing. It's and a, yeah. yeah, it's my personality. Mm -hmm. And that's totally fine. But there are some times where I feel very Gen Z. And I'm in the process of mailing something, and it has been incredibly overwhelming. Like a letter? A letter. Just Birthday card for my friend mm, Sam. And just writing listening. addresses? I have, to, I have to write the address. It's How do you also, do it? Okay, so <laughs> name? Yeah. Wait, are you left-handed? No. Oh. Um, that I got excited cool, for that. Uh, name, the street, That'll be one of the, weirdest the, parts of the city week. and the zip code, but that goes up in the corner. I don't know how many stamps I'm supposed to use. For a card, just I one. don't know the I answer. Think, I, think, I, think it's, I think it's just one. It's just one? I have First to go how big is a card? How big is a card? And small. And yeah, one. Just one. one. Just one. Is it one of those like music playing cards? Does it have like, a battery pack in the back? No, but, that would be cool. I believe I if it's not good, they send it back to you. Mm -hmm. and then they I always put two, two stamps just in case. Oh, Even see? if it's two pieces wow, of paper, two nice. stamps just in nice. case. If you go to the post office, <laughs> yeah, they'll tell too. you what you need to pay in postage. And, and yeah. then they don't even use a stamp. They kind of just right. print it and then sure. put it on mm -hmm. for you. Yeah. But I already have the stamps. Yeah. I, I went and did I Did you got, get forever stamps years ago like I did? No, I got mm. stamps. I have Buzz Lightyear stamps. Nice. Wow. Yeah, you pretty cool. For those? I thought those were awesome. They were expensive. I'm a bit confused as to where you're going. To the address or to infinity? And beyond. 
Nice. Wow. Uh, but You're crushing it this segment. Yeah, I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's. Which been hand a, is that that you're lifting? Thank you. My, my you want to know why I'm intrigued by left-handedness? <laughs> yeah. It's because I don't know how you get, or not you. You're not lefty. How they write without like getting their whole hand dirty? Well, like well, you just, it's just kind of sucks. all tricky. And well, it's, I know they figured it out because there's been left-handed people forever, but it just you, intrigues you me. You know how in school they had the left-handed desk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like the world, there's we we did this show before, but there's there was a study done, and the sample is questionable. But the the suggestion is that if you're a left-handed, you're more likely to die in a in a tragic, weird accident mm-hmm. than than you are if you are a righty, because the world was designed by right-handers. I was just thinking you're more likely to erase the chalkboard as you're writing on the chalkboard, but didn't really think about death. These Buzz Lightyear stamps are like the human Buzz Lightyear, not the cartoon Buzz Lightyear. What? Or am I looking at the wrong stamps? What? Is it Tim Allen on a stamp? No, it's like, not like Toy Story Buzz Lightyear. It's like Buzz Lightyear from the Lightyear no. movie. Lightyear. What a flop that I was. I thought it looked like the, just like Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story. I don't know what mm. human Buzz Lightyear is. Well, they they like reimagined oh, Buzz Lightyear. But even the reimagining, it was still a cartoon. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. but he was meant to be a person, yeah. correct? That then Buzz Lightyear, the toy, was based off of? Mm-hmm. It wasn't really. It wasn't Buzz Lightyear without the, like the the. Is whole it these fit on. these green ones? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's not yeah. that's that's not a cartoon that's buzz. Hum- that's a human buzz. That's a human buzz. No, well, that's a cartoon. That's a cartoon mm. human. Is this really important what? in the conversation? No, I'm very confused. I thought it Turn was all a Billy cartoon. I was no. I was following along in the story. What made it difficult so far? Well, Mailing now the whole Buzz Lightyear is a human cartoon is completely yeah. throwing me off. Well, to be honest, I lost interest when you revealed that you weren't left-handed. Oh. Okay, that's fair. Thank that's you. fine. Oh, man. I don't know where to put the mail. Yeah. I don't know how to send it. I can you relate it, to this. You put it in your mailbox I and you put have, that, but I, you know, the little flag on the have, side? I, don't, I, don't, I live in an apartment. I don't have a flag. Well, no, you receive mail. Wait a second. I you guys put up mail. that flag every time you put but mail in there? I've You're never done that in my life. I do. For outgoing no, mail. mail. That's yeah. right. Outgoing when you have outgoing mail. You just figure they're going to open it anyway so they see what's in there. But they probably think it's left over. It's yesterday's mail. Not if it's addressed to some. The flag is a courtesy to the mail carrier. But like, I don't have flags. Hello, is I've got really, mail for you. Is it wait, really that much to it, ask to wait. look in my box? You're going to be in there anyway. Is it a courtesy or is it what you're supposed to it's do? It's what you're supposed yeah, to do. It's the law. It's a custom. It's a custom. It's customary. It's just how it works. Says yeah. the man that's, that's how it goes. Says the man who says CBS doctors can't buy houses. <laughs> that, Billy. I mean, it is not I don't the make the rules. You just report them. So did you, like, lick the envelope closed? Is it a stick? No. Uh, a stick you got to fold in the envelope, right? We yeah, don't lick. I, you like, I'll do, like, a little... S- no, I do, like, a little sticker or something because I'm crafty. Oh, I have a lot of stickers. Oh. Um, because the I haven't seen Seinfeld, but I have seen the episode. You're crafty. Where... That's actually left-handed behavior. Mm. They're better with arts Izzy? and crafts. Mm-hmm. Yes. Izzy. Really? Says who? Mm. That, that's the thing. <laughs> they're they're that's also... A, yeah. They're also more likely... Moyer. They're also more like Ted Billy. No, they're also more likely to be in, more intelligent than they righties. They also supposedly see the basketball rim bent slightly forward so they can be better shooters. What? Yep, that's what, what? I've heard. No, being left-handed is is a bit of a hack. Well, I, w- I if can't you just die change early. that now. It's been too long. I'm right-handed. You I'm can, sorry you, that you I'm you can not tra- what you try. You can train yourself. You've never you, tried. But I don't think have tried. You haven't tried. What would be rad? You could do it. I believe in you. What would be rad is if you are one of these people that train, like in baseball, you... You, you see parents Lefties are more, more likely to be lefty specialists yeah. than they baseball, too. Definitely yeah. more crafty lefties. Randy it can, Choate. It can be a learned behavior. I've never heard that. It can be a learned behavior, but what would totally. be cool is never if you Choate. learn how to be a left-hander, you all of a sudden become more artistic. Like, wow, I'm all of a sudden drawing so much better now. Hmm. Yeah, I don't is think that that's true. That's true. No, no, no. I'm saying... Look, guys, follow the conversation. That's what you I tell can't. left-handed people so they don't feel like freaks, right? Like, oh, yeah, you're more... You know. I just tell people they'll be more like Kobe Bryant. Because huh. he was able to use both hands. But, Lucy, you can't find where to put the mail? I don't know. where. To, how do I get it out? Where do you get your mail from at your uh, Mailbox. complex? I have a little, it's like a, little a part, key. Yeah, a little key. Oh, key. They, they don't, they don't have a slot. slot that they have a slot that says outgoing mail. One. No, they there have an outgoing slot. There one, but I didn't see it. Yeah. All right, so, I like, looked for it yesterday. I like walked an, around the mail room. Is there an office manager or something you can ask the question to? Yeah, it was late last night, so I'll probably ask them today. But... The problem is, is that this has been a journey. It shouldn't be this hard to send mail. <laughs> well, I mean, you no. really should just text her happy birthday, but, but it's or him. not the same. I think a card means a lot more. It does. She sends me cards on my birthday, so oh. I have to send her. Yeah, yeah. So that's how that yeah. works. Yeah, what do you, if they do it, you have delete. to do it that's too. Yeah. What do you do with the cards? How long do you keep the cards before you toss them? I keep every card anyone's ever written. To uh, me really, shoebox forever. Yeah. yeah, a little memory box. 
Hmm. You don't want to do that, actually. I don't get. I'm young. I don't get that many cards. Yeah, you don't want to do that. There's going to be a point. time where you're like doing some spring cleaning and you're having to make that tough decision of that's whether to throw thing. those away. Just throw them away from the beginning. You never oh, have to worry I about like that. that. As that soon as happy. Christmas is over, all those cards off my fridge. If it says something nice, we're like, I'm not keeping every like wedding announcement I get or like just happy birthday, Lucy. Yeah. But mm. if it's like someone took the time to write something kind, I'm going to keep it. But it did the job. You yeah. experienced it. It's like rewatching something. It's not going to be the same over and over again, is it? I mean, if it's a loved one that you may lose soon, then you keep Whoa. that, I would think. I think you're all lying. Who are you trying to impress? You, you chuck them. No, you I chuck always Right in the garden. <laughs> all right, that was like, oh, very nice, very thoughtful, cool. It doesn't take away from how much it meant to me. Like, this was no, nice. This Thank was you nice. for this card. But it's clutter now. No, it's garbage. I, I it's garbage. Once in my brain, it's garbage. garbage. You guys are people that cards don't mean anything to. You just open the card. You look to see if something you falls out. You ever get one yeah. with no. the music? Yeah. And that thing is staying open in your house. And oh, every random it. moment you oh, hear the music it. playing, the worst. I the like best. a good message in a card. But are you guys going back every month? Let me go read this again. Like, no. <laughs> you read it. You know the message. Garbage. I actually don't even need the card. I don't want to know what the just card said. Me. The just card's just me. pretty. Just send me a nice message. Because what I want to know is what you wrote on the card individually. The card could say anything. I've had so many cards that the message is, card says it all. Yeah. That does not yeah. work for me. <laughs> I don't mind. You guys, your friends oh. are probably me. Mainly yeah. men. Huh? And my you think friend, you think my male friends are sending me birthday cards? They're probably oh, writing right. oh, happy birthday, Mike, or something. <laughs> we did. My dad made me feel guilty yesterday. My mom's birthday today, actually. Happy birthday, hey, mom! Happy birthday. Yesterday, I'm over there seeing her, like actually having face that he's like, "Where's the card?" Yeah, Where's you gotta like, you gotta bring a card. We brought her a bottle of wine from Nashville. Like oh, we we yeah. like Just, we brought her something, and we brought my person. Like I didn't have to write a card. The, like, hey, mom, the yeah. new birthday Isn't card. Isn't that awkward? You sit there. I'm sorry, Mike. You sit there and you stare at the person, read the words that you just said, and get emotional, perhaps or perhaps not, rather than just being able to tell them those things. We really don't have to keep this industry alive. It's an outdated concept. What you do is on your IG away message, you just say, "Happy birthday, mom," and that's it. The nobody, card. Yeah, the card that. means <laughs> something. The card means something. To who? Particularly to uh, people of a certain age. Correct. To me. Yes. There you 25 go. Twenty-five-year-olds. You know, Gen she, Z loves to them. use a random example, uh, your mother's other son hmm. gave her a card. Greg's favorite. And she was very appreciative. It hmm. was he wrote a nice message on the card. So you're yeah, saying a pretended. card is better than a nice bottle of wine? Yes. Right? yes. But she's yes. 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 I was there in person, hugging her, wishing her a happy birthday. Right. And I when brought she's her a drinking gift. that wine, she's not going to be thinking, wow, this isn't as good as the card. She won't remember who gave her the guess, bottle of wine. You know what? I guess we're going to so lunch to on it. Wednesday. Like, I'm doing things with her. Oh, hey, I mom, didn't know let's that. go to that's lunch. All right, that's better than a card. That's You're better absolved. than a bottle of wine. You're absolved yeah. of guilt. Yeah. Just, dearest mother, it's just, <laughs> just say all the things that you want to say. No, it means something. I'm delivering you a birthday card in the form of me actually saying everything that would be the card. Thanks, mom, for everything you've done like cards be here are expensive you. too you're right they cost eight bucks not if you go to the dollar store that's the hat go to the dollar Ooh, store one dollar okay. cards no one knows the difference uh, despite right. my general demeanor Get a hallmark i'm also they one have of the young section. people here and mm. i love getting a card because we don't not get surprising. any sort of yeah, well weird, yeah all right so <laughs> and that's why i started it you know, the way I'm, that i did I'm, yeah i'm old enough to remember when people would travel they would send a postcard yeah. I yes. want to send my friends yeah. postcards. And it would, it you would still do? I said I want to, but this whole mail thing has really turned me off. Yeah. 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 Imagine, <laughs> I don't know where to put if it. If you're having difficulty in your own like complex, imagine trying to figure out how to send a postcard in Greece. You yeah, know? that's crazy. You could use a carrier pigeon. Lucy. That's true. I remember yeah. like my third grade teacher sent me a postcard for, from South Africa. And by the time that's it, weird. By the time it, uh, Mrs. Athens, she was a peach, but she, uh, she was really nice. And she also titled it Master Michael Ryan Ruiz because that's like the young form of mister but by the time i got it i was already three weeks into school what and grade it's just like this was third grade who calls their teacher a peach a third grade teacher i think it's a funny way to just reference somebody mm -hmm. Hmm. yeah she was a real gem that's mrs. athens that's well, I, I assume mrs athens is no longer with us why is mrs athens sending right. postage internationally to a bunch of third graders yeah. she was really, mrs creepy. athens was super cool was because yeah that's what, super yeah, cool yeah it creepy. always starts as super, super cool, cool yeah. and then no she let us watch jurassic we were at westwood what? and she let us watch jurassic park in the oh, class the cool teacher. Oh, this is cool. weird she would show slideshows of her african vacations i saw like these two lions tearing apart this hippo it was pretty gnarly for a third grader especially in like a baptist school it's crazy mrs athens Thank you. Did Mrs. Dasson teach at all, or? Yeah, she taught. Seems like she goes on vacation. She taught. No, she 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 taught me to enjoy my summertime 
Live, laugh, love, master. Wow. Surprised that teacher said. could afford a uh, European I was vacation. wondering that, too. What else was going on there? Makes you wonder. A little this embezzlement. This is a new and unimproved Dan Levatar show with the Stugats. Gamble on by DraftKings. Thank you.